Hey everyone, and welcome back to the shop. I'm John Peters. And when it comes to a wood lathe, I'm no expert. But I did turn these legs for this classic cherry bench last week, and they're not perfect, but I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. And just like with anything, practice makes perfect. So with that in mind, another good idea to get your practice in on the wood lathe is a French rolling pin. That's what we're gonna make today, so let's get started. Before I can turn this, I'm going to have to square it up and it measures an inch and five-eighths. So I'm just gonna make one rip at an inch and five-eighths so the block will measure an inch and five-eighths by an inch and five-eighths. Then I'll square up one end before cutting it to 22 inches. Find the center and mark it with an awl. I mounted my lathe to this mobile workstation a few weeks ago and it's become a great addition to my small shop. If you didn't see this project and you want to, I'll put a link in the description below. This is the Excelsior Mini Lathe and it was given to me by Rockler along with the carbide lathe tools a few years ago and it works pretty good. But like any tool purchase, it's a good idea to do your homework and make sure you get what's best for you. I will say a benchtop lathe is a nice tool to add to the shop and it doesn't take up a ton of space. Before I start turning, I'll mark the blank with a few reference lines to work towards. Here I'm using the diamond shape tool to get started, which is probably the wrong tool. But like I said, I'm just a beginner when it comes to the lathe and I still have a lot to learn. The tool rest is only about 10 inches long, so I'll need to move the tool rest as I move along the workpiece. When I'm shaping the rolling pin, I keep the highest or the thickest part at the center and then taper it down towards the ends. You can see that I now have the general shape of the rolling pin, but it's definitely not smooth. And because I'm not very good with a lathe, the idea of using a sanding block like this, maybe it's cheating, I don't know. It's going to get me where I wanna be. And I can already see an inconsistency here where this spot is a little bit higher, but I'll be able to work that towards the center and have more control because it's such a wide surface. I'm starting out with 40 grit paper on the block, so I'm really removing a lot of material. And then I'll move up the grit to eventually finish sand the rolling pin with 220. And for the finish, I like this food safe board wax made by my friends over at SoCal Woodshop. All right, well that didn't take too long and it was a fun project and my wife's a baker so she's really going to like to have this. Of course, this is a much simpler project than the legs, but it's like anything. It's just time with the tool. You kind of build up that experience and you get more comfortable and then you can do more and more things. A few details about these legs. If you didn't see the video, when I was working on these legs, I made one leg and I used that as my reference and I would line that up with the leg that I was working on. And they're not all exactly the same, but they're pretty close and the legs are far enough apart so you really can't tell if they're exactly the same. So that's kind of a, a nice plus there. Another thing I wanna mention is when I made this first cut on the legs, I first made a very shallow pass using 
my crosscut sled in the stop block and that was to avoid any tear out on the straight part of the leg. So just a, a few little details on this project. This was definitely a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, which will let you know each time I post a new video. And go ahead and hit that like button. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.